Hey guys, in today's lesson we're going to talk a little bit about different types of reasoning and the two we're going to focus on is deductive reasoning and inductive reasoning. And you'll probably see these terms come up in future math classes and also in your science classes because they're two pretty foundational types of reasoning. There are m more but we're going to kind of focus on these. Um, deductive reasoning we're going to start with over here. This is probably the kind that we're most familiar with in terms of mathematics. Um, the main point here for deductive reasoning is that it goes from, from general to specific. You take a lot of definitions, facts, and rules, and you funnel it down to a logical certain conclusion for a specific case. This is kind of what we're talking about when we talk about an axiomatic system. So if you think about Euclid's elements, for example, he starts with postulates, um, definitions, common notions, and he puts all those things together to create more specific conclusions, which we call theorems. So this is kind of the, the Euclidean style of logic, uh, deductive logic, and this is the way the elements are written. You'll also see that we have lawyer and detective here as kind of like mnemonics or hints or keywords to remember that, that goes with deductive reasoning. So let me give you a couple examples of how that would, how that would look. A lawyer uses like facts and laws and, and um, definitions and things like that and puts it all together to try to convince somebody that somebody's that something is true. For example, let's say you have some evidence that you're bringing in and you have a video of somebody at night at the scene of a crime and you know that that video comes from a certain day. You could use a, a, some facts and, and, um, and definitions and things like that and laws to be able to come up with uh, a conclusion such as we know for a fact that this video came uh, to us on this day or the video was taken on this day. We know for a fact that on this day of the year sundown is at 6.30 p.m. We know for a fact that in the video the sun was already down when we saw the suspect at the scene of the crime. Therefore, we know that on this day the sub suspect was at the scene of the crime past 6.30. Right, so you put all of those facts and ideas together to reach a specific conclusion. All those things are, are pretty general, right? The time, of, the time the sun goes down, the idea that it's dark once the sun goes down, the idea that you, know, you got a video from a certain day. Those are all kind of specific ideas, but when you put them all together, you kind of pinpoint the suspect was there at this specific time. So that's kind of an idea how, of how a lawyer would use deductive reasoning to make a case or to get people to think a certain conclusion. Um, you'll also notice these two things down here. It says false if premise is false and then valid and sound. So sometimes what can happen is you make an argument and that argument follows all the rules of logic but the very first thing you said wasn't true and so everything after it is not true. Let me give you an example of what that would look like. If you made a claim where you said something like all grandfathers are bald Harold is a grandfather, therefore Harold is bald. If you follow that chain of reasoning, the logic makes sense, it's deductive reasoning, but the problem is the first statement wasn't true. All grandfathers are bald, that statement isn't true to begin with. So while the argument has validity, or it's valid, in terms of it follows the rules of logic, it's not actually true because the first statement wasn't true. So instead of saying true or false, we say valid versus sound, right? So an argument can be logically valid, but be not sound because it's not true. It could also be both. It could be valid and sound. Um, but the idea is that it's false, or in other words, it's not sound if the premise is false, even if the logic holds out. Let me give you another example of that. Let's say I give you an algebra problem. Say, hey, do you number 30 from, from this book? Um, on this page. And you're like, great, I can do that. And you write down 31 instead of 30, problem 31. And you go through all the problem and you work it out and you do all the rules and you follow all the laws and you don't make any mistakes and you get the answer. Is that answer right? Well, no, because you did the wrong problem. And you could argue, but hey, Mr. Lowry, I did everything right. I did all the steps. I didn't make any mistakes. And I would say, that's true. So your reasoning was valid but your answer isn't sound because you started with the wrong problem to begin with. Otherwise, your, your premise or what you started with wasn't right to begin with. So everything that kind of followed after that, although you didn't make any mistakes in your logic, it still 
ultimately false or ultimately unsound. So that's kind of the idea uh, on this one. So again, main principles is it's general to specific. It uses definitions, facts, and rules, but we can kind of extend those and talk about Euclid, right? Postulates, theorems, um, common notions, things like that. And it stacks those things together to come up with specific conclusions. We're gonna come back in a second and talk about inductive reasoning on the other side, but that's, that's deductive reasoning in a nutshell for you.